known when I be on the mic. I'm internationally known, yo. I'm internationally known when I be on the mic. Welcome to the Being Neo Podcast, episode five. I can't even believe we've gotten to episode five. I mean, technically, I just, I just stopped recording episode four. For those of you that have listened or are like binging my podcast right now, you'll see. And this dude does not change clothes. Calm down, calm down. I literally just stopped episode four, and we are now continuing with episode five. Now, the dichotomy of the conversations that we just had. That is what I want you to pay attention to. I want you to pay attention to my Gemini nature. We are about to flip the switch because we were. Ju- I just spent 41 minutes talking about religion and Christ, and <laughs> and now we're going to talk sex. <laughs> Which, listen, sex is a very godly thing. Um, I can't even. I can't even say that with a straight face, people. I don't even like. I don't even know what to say. I, I feel I feel like I could just take the episode with just that because the reality is, if God were to look at my life and tell me of all the areas that I've sinned, sex would be hot high. Up. <laughs> sex would be high on the list of sinning for me, anyway. All right, before we go too far in the rest of the subjection that's going to come out of my mouth, let's jump into the facts. Facts, ma'am, just the facts. Does anybody know that being Neo podcast trivia continues? Facts, ma'am, just the facts. Comment wherever you're listening or watching this, whether this is YouTube, on Spotify, Apple Music, I want you to comment what TV series that's from and who says it. All right, okay. So sex tourism, the top 20 sex tourist countries in the world, based on September 28, 2023 data at 3.43 p.m., by Insider Monkey. So in this article, we'll take a look at the top 20 sex tourist countries in the world. Are you guys like pumped and excited to find out like the number 20th country? Because I think it starts with 20. Yep, 20, Taiwan. Taiwan is the number 20th. So Taiwan serves a destination for women who fall prey to sex trafficking with a lesser but still significant degree of involvement as a source for women and children subjected to this illicit practice within Taiwan, Taiwan, <clears throat> domestic sex trafficking poses a prominent concern marked by a growing trend wherein traffickers exploit individuals, both Taiwanese and foreign, who are struggling with drug addiction. All right, so let me just plug in real quick, Macchiato's Coffee. You guys see me post these mugs um, on a regular basis. It's my mug. This is Macchiato's Coffee. I am readjusting things on the site as of the date of this episode so that all of the Macchiato's merch and items you can purchase directly through the freeyourmind.store website. Um, it was getting to the point where I just, it was, it's too many things to manage. So I'm going to consolidate. Plus, guys, the Being Neo podcast, like I am the brand. I want everything to shuttle all of the traffic, all of the SEO. I want everything to come through here. Um, so with that said, Macchiato stuff will be there, but Macchiato's exists to help survivors of human trafficking. Um, it is something that I dealt with in Florida that broke my heart, touched my heart, changed my life. And I vowed to, when I could get an opportunity to figure out a way to help and contribute and fight. So it was something I started with my ex-wife, um, Macchiato's Coffee. We'll talk about that on another episode. Um, I wonder if she'll come on and do an episode with me. I never, I had her on once. Um, I wonder if she'd come on now in this capacity. I'll have to ask her, but we could talk about it. But that said, human trafficking is real. I know the sounds of freedom was out and people got excited about it, but it was bullshit. Nobody really, like, people get excited about things, but then they don't actually take action. It's like me telling you about the peace over, peace over everything designs and saying, hey, buy a shirt. And then 
crickets. It's one of those things for me. It's not, you know, that's not the point. My point is that we have got to get to a point in this life where we stop acting like we can be passive and the thing that we want will happen because it won't, you know, like it just will not, that that's not how that works. Wage war for peace. It means, man, take the time, the difficult work to figure out why you keep giving your peace away and in what forms you're giving it away and exchanging it for. Um, if you have a cause that you're fighting for, whether it's human trafficking, it could be spina bifida. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Like do something for it. Like take actual action and do something for it. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to get off on that tangent, but human trafficking is one of those things, you know, I see people post and they share stuff. And I'm like, don't just post and share, like actually do something. Um, by the way, if you're looking for organizations to partner with Love 146 and A21, they're organizations that Macchiatos, we partner with, and I would recommend you check both of them out. Okay, so 20, Taiwan. I'm sorry. 19, South Korea. Prostitution's officially prohibited. However, data from the Korean Women's Development Institute reveals that in 2007, the sex industry in the country was estimated to be worth approximately 14 trillion South Korean won which is equivalent to, first off, you guys are sitting there like $14 trillion. Oh, it's probably not good. That's still $13 billion, which is constituting 1.6% constituting of the nation's gross domestic product. That is insane. All right, we're not going to, we're not going to go through the entire list here because I said I was going to share these, these episodes, but let's find out where Colombia is on this list. So it started at 20, 9 is the dimension 8. I just found it. So eight, Colombia is recognized as a destination popular for its sex tourism. In addition to its unfortunate reputation for high drug use, the primary driving factor in the Colombian sex trade is the practice of sex workers, adjusting their pricing based on the attractiveness and charm of their clients. Even in the smallest Colombian towns, you'll find hospitable women who are eager to host you and provide a memorable experience. All right, we've got enough facts out. Full disclosure, I smoke between episode four and episode five. Part of the reason for that is sometimes it's difficult to talk about. And at the same time, I've got some juicy stories. <laughs> so let's talk. Um, let's first talk hookup culture because, well, because it's a popular topic right now. I feel like it's buzzing. People talking the hookup culture here in Colombia, specifically in Medellin, where I am. And I have been for three years. Guys, so by definition, the hookup culture from the videos that I have seen people posting about on YouTube and other places has been in regards to, you know, like one night stands, like you going out to the club and coming home and having sex with someone that you met that day, that night. And an astounding number of people on YouTube are posting videos saying that that does not happen here in Colombia. Now, I'm not racist, okay? I'm just going to say this. I'm not racist. But the people that are posting these videos are not ethnic. They're not minorities. They're majorities. Um, and the reason that I say that is because I feel like the culture shock, the cultural differences um, as a minority in... Colombia and as a majority that is recently in Colombia is different. Uh, and then there's one person, I, I want to say he's, I mean, I think he's, I want to say he's Mexican. Life with David, shout out to Life with David. Um, check his podcast out. He's got, he's got great his podcast, his YouTube channel out. Um, but I want to say that Life with David, I want to say he's Mexican, but he's from Texas. I think if I'm correct, I think he's from Austin. I think he's Mexican originally, but, um, so it's a little bit different for him, but it just, I don't, I don't, I don't know why people say that there isn't hookup culture here. Um, I said this in episode one, my first day in Colombia, hours, I'm talking hours after being in the country, I was in the bed with someone and I'm not saying that's a brag. Um, please understand for everyone listening to this podcast, I said very clearly in episode one, 
And one of the things that I, I was seeking peace in was sexually with women. I didn't say sexually with women. I said with women. Um, I was looking for peace in women with women. And um, I'm not proud of that. I had fun doing it. <laughs> like, I'm not, you're not about to get to. You're not about to get me to act like I'm deathly ashamed. Like I'm not perfect. If you like, I, I and I said this on one of the other episodes. If you if you came on the new being neo podcast to think that I was about to you know come on here and talk about my perfections, fuck, sign off. That's not me. Um, and so I have lived a promiscuous life. I. I can't lie, people. I, I still live a promiscuous life. I still live a promiscuous life. Uh, but I have been doing very good. <laughs> so there's credit There's credit for that. And I mean that. I really, I, I, I cannot, uh, I can't stress enough, man. The shift for myself in the, the clarity of peace over everything has really shifted my focus on so many things. And so like, for instance, for those of you that have followed my YouTube channel long enough and are watching this, I am in a very tiny apartment. Like it's super tiny. Typically I'm in a three bedroom, two bath apartment um, with a very large balcony so that I can smoke out on the balcony. Like that is typically the accommodations that I stay in. I have been in the last three years. For the first time since I've been in Colombia, I am in an apartment that I could, I mean, I could kick my shoe from, <laughs> I could kick my slipper off from one end out the, straight out the window. <laughs> it's very, it's very, very tiny. Um, but I purposely moved into an apartment this small because I didn't want to share my space with anyone. Uh, I've had only, hmm, I've only had one person come in this apartment. So, yeah, nope, I lied. I lied. I've had three people come into this apartment. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So sorry. Um. <laughs> huh. Okay, so I'm laughing and I just got, because like the reality is, even, even as I'm saying this, like I'm sitting here thinking about, ah, uh, my cheeks hurt. I'm thinking about who I've had sex with this year, like in 2024. And that's what's changing the number of, so first I'm thinking to myself, where have I had sex? And, and the majority of the sex I've had this year has not been in this apartment. So then I was thinking, where? And as a, it's, even as I'm sitting here saying this, I'm like, I think it's fair to say none of them were planned either. So like, this is why when people talk about the hookup culture in Colombia, I'm like, I can't walk out the door without having the opportunity to hook up. It doesn't mean I exercise that opportunity every time, but like, I definitely have the, I have an opportunity to have sex with a woman every single day, a different woman every single day that I have never known or met before. And so like, when people tell me that there's a hookup culture here, when I watch videos of that, I'm like, you guys are crazy. And my friends will tell you, um, most often for me, when I go home, I go home with two. And I'm not saying that's a brag. I'm just saying that like, it's a reality. Like, um, I'll go out to the club and have the option to go home with like two women together, just in my nights out and who I am and how I communicate and vibes, what like whatever. Uh, I'm not saying that to to like. I feel like people think that I'm trying to like brat. Oh yeah, that's how you roll. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that, like. So it's just, it's just been the opportunities I've had. Um, I met a guy in a coffee shop once. We we're having this conversation. It was, there were three guys, me and two other guys and two women. 
And I was telling them, like, I don't ever go out with the intention of coming home with a girl. Like, I don't, I don't, I have worked security in nightclubs for so long and had, had like, I just, I don't. Um, I just remembered a story right now that I wanted to share on the uh, Peace Over Religion episode. Uh, they don't have to come up another time, but just, I'm going to segue this in really quick. Just remind me of the casino, my first night at the casino. Okay, remember that. Okay, back into the security aspect of things. So, like, <clears throat> I have watched girls get hit on by drunken idiots for so many years that, like, that is never my thing. Um, shout out to all my friends that I go out with. They will tell you, when I go out, the number one thing on my mind is just dancing. I promise you, like, I want to wring out my shirt at the end of the night. Like, for real. And I don't have to be dancing with anyone. <laughs> like, don't get it confused. I do not have to dance with anyone. I just want loud music that I love, that I can feel, and that I can move to. And that's it. And it doesn't matter if it is hip-hop, reggae, reggaeton, bachata, merengue, salsa. Like, with the exception of line dancing, because I've never learned how to do it. I'm pretty much down for anything else. So like all of that said, I don't ever go out with the intention to get women or to get laid or any, like I just go out to have a good time. And I just always manifest the opportunity to come home with women. So in Colombia, since I've been here, I mean, even, and listen, I just want to give you guys some credibility. I want to build my credibility by giving you guys some options to confirm what it is I'm telling you. If you look at, which should be linked in the description, the video of dating a webcam model, you will hear me talk about the fact that our first date, I had promised her we were not going to have sex. It was made up in my mind that we were not going to have sex. We had sex, but that was not the point. The point was we were not going to. And she forced me to, I mean, she didn't force me to, but the point is that we had sex because in her mind, the same way that I was focused on the fact that we weren't having sex this first date, she was focused on the fact that we were, I mean, like dead set. She knew she was going to have sex with me and spend the night with me. And I was pissed. If I'm being honest, I felt, I felt kind of used and the sex the first time was not good. I say all this in the video watch the video but my point is like there is absolutely a hookup culture here so now in colombia there are definitely the traditional women that you meet in a group with friends and that turns into something absolutely and unequivocally and i've had that happen a few times I'm having that happen right now. Um, you know, like when I go out with my friends and I connect with other people that are friends of theirs and, you know, conversations happen, numbers get exchanged and you go out a few more times and you eventually feel like there's a connection and you want to spend some time with them and go have coffee or lunch or whatever. And no, that's not a, I met them and I had sex with them. No, absolutely not. Okay, cool. So let's flip the other side of this. I started with the statistics of sex tourism. You'll also be able to reference the video I talked about my first night here in Medellin being approached by a prepago, which is the word for prostitute. Um, <clears throat> there's various words for prostitution in Spanish, but pre prepago is the word here in reference to prostitutes in Medellin. And that said, um, that video i referenced the the story of the propago that thought i owed her money for buying her a beer and having a conversation which you saw how you if you didn't i didn't pay her anything nothing happened of that whole story other than the fact that i learned police like to do extortion and um so do prostitutes so i digress watch that video um you know so other than that aspect when you look at and realize that the prostitution level is so high here specifically in medellin it's impossible for people to say things like you can't because what happens when the girl that's usually working in Parque Lleres, like she's usually working in Parque Lleres, decides to have a normal night out with her friends, but half her girlfriends are going to go work in the park and the other half of her girlfriends want to go out. And she happens to be one of the girls that goes out and she meets you at one of the normal clubs. 
that's not like a club where prostitutes go and pay a cover to look for guys that are looking for a higher class parqueeras girls. Um, and you guys kick it off and you dance and you have a good time. And the end of the night gets there and you're a foreigner and she knows you're a foreigner, but she's hoping that maybe you're the foreigner. Maybe you're the foreigner that she can turn into her, her one of many long-term boyfriends. And you're there and you're hungry and you're going to get her something to eat and one thing leads to another and you go back to your place. And I'm not saying that from like a, a mythical place. Like this has happened on more than one occasion. And it actually works out well. I mean, honestly, like real talk, it works out really well for these girls because, and and they're not always like girls that work in Yadis. It's just the girls in general that work in that area, because that's the other thing, right? Like the sex industry here in Medellin, it doesn't have to be a prostitute. It could be a webcam model. I can't tell you the percentage of females between the ages of 18 and 35 here in Colombia that are webcam models. And so I'm not saying that all webcam models take up the opportunity to sleep with people, but what I am saying is that they're very comfortable in their sexuality. They recognize the fact that most foreigners are here for a limited time. And if you have a really good vibe with someone and you're a sexual nature, why wouldn't you have sex with them? I mean, yes, we could talk about guarding your peace over everything and you know, not using sex as a means or form of valuing yourself. Like we can talk about all of these different reasons as to why I know, but my point is that it happens every day. Um, literally. So like, maybe not for Colombian men because it's not looked at the same way, but a woman looks at me, knows that I am not Colombian and automatically thinks I'm a for foreigner here for a limited time only. Right? Like, I'm like the limited Christmas latte flavor at Starbucks that you better get while it's still hot because the season's almost over. And I mean, maybe I'm the one that gets you into the US. Maybe I'm the one that whisks you away and gives you the financial stability you haven't had or ever had and wanted. And the aspect of women looking at men here specifically for that as an opportunity for basically sugar daddies is so high that the hookup culture rate is is there and then and then look let's 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 be honest right i'm fluent in spanish i'm a good looking dude for the most part who am i kidding i'm fine as hell <laughs> <laughs> oh y'all i'm crazy but <laughs> but seriously um i had never came to columbia for women ever it was never on my radar to be here for that. So that said, I could get women anywhere. Like Colombia, back in the US, like I'm I'm a slick, I'm a slick dude. Okay. I have game. I have swagger. <laughs> I remember sending my ex-wife a video of a swagger coach that Ed Young did. Oh my goodness, it was hilarious. She thought I really had a swagger coach because I am that smooth. I really am that smooth. Okay, so that's the um <laughs> I don't have a problem speaking to women. Um, and I definitely don't have a problem speaking to women in Spanish. And so I think that that's helpful for me for sure. But I also know that I just spent some time with someone here. Um, and I mean I've I spent time with different foreigners here, and I mean you can like it's too easy to be had. Sex in Colombia is too easy to be had. There's absolutely a hookup culture for ex for foreigners here. Now, that said, again, some of these people that put YouTube videos out, when you look at them, they don't look like they could get girls anywhere. Like in their home countries, it does not look like they could put women. So I don't expect them to be able to come to another country where Spanish is a second language or not even a language they speak and be able to pull women. They're going to feel like dating is extremely difficult, which for that tip of, tip type of person, absolutely, and 100%. But for me, I'm in this tiny apartment so that I don't bring more women home, so that I don't do the entertainment thing, so that I'm not like, yeah, come over, cook, we'll smoke, we'll talk. And I'm, you know, now entertaining multiple women in my apartment, cooking, smoking, and other things. So like, and I'm, and I'm like, 
that's just the truth. In order for me to do the things that I need to get done in order for peace over everything, my focus has solely been this. This is where I'm at. Um, and so, no, I have not been perfect, but I promise you I've been so good at being focused on this and not sharing time or spending time with anyone. So this is my hats off for myself. All right, next aspect, sex tourism and the sex industry and all of those things here also make it extremely difficult, extremely difficult to have a meaningful relationship. The aspect of how many people look at foreigners here is just an opportunity, especially in Medellin, it goes far outside of just sex tourism. Like, oh my goodness. I have, I say this to Colombians all the time when I'm talking to my friends here, or like an Uber driver, and they're asking me about, you know, what do I think about Colombia and Medellin? And I'm like, yeah, you know, my favorite city here is Bogota. I love Bogota. It's the capital. Um, people there, it reminds me of New York. They're very focused. It's a colder climate. Um, the friends that I have in Bogota are still friends. They're like hardcore friends here. Um, I mean, my friends here in Medellin are too as well now, but I haven't had anyone in Bogota stab me in my back or do something shady or ask me some kind of odd off the wall bullshit question about money. Like everyone has been just friends to be friends in Medellin. That has not been the case. That said, I feel like it's not just, it's every, it's everyone in Medellin. No, not everyone in Medellin, but like the culture in Medellin, it's more of a Paisa, Medellin culture than it is like out on the coast. When I say coast, I'm talking like Santa Marta, Barranquilla, not Cartagena. Cartagena might as well be Medellin in this in this aspect. But everyone is looking for something. It doesn't have to be prostitution. The Uber driver is looking for you to give them more of your foreign contact friends when they come to the airport so that um, they can make more money on those people that come in. Dude, my, I, I had a friend that was just here and he's using an application like Uber and he has it set on his card so that when the rides are coming, he pays for a card. But you also have the option to set it for cash and you pay the driver's cash. Well, he had it for like, oh man, days, okay? Days where he's taking multiple rides per day and it is set on his card and the drivers are taking his cash. This is just bullshit. It would not, I'm sorry, they wouldn't do that in Bogota. If I was in Bogota and I made that mistake, they would tell me, oh, no, you paid with your card. Here in fucking Medellin? No, they're taking that shit every fucking time. So, like, they're friendly. They're really friendly here in Medellin, but you don't know why. You have no idea why they're friendly. So, you know, you hope it's just because they, you know, they want to get to know about your culture. Or they have questions about your country, where you're from. But most of the time, it's not. It's for some kind of financial up uptick that they think they're going to get by interacting with you. Um, it's so sad. It's really sad. And it's fucking annoying. And it makes dating serious and serious relationships tough because you don't know why the woman is dating you. I mean, I can't tell you, oh my goodness, 90%, 90, 95% of the women that I've dated here, if we were going someplace and they weren't meeting me at my apartment, even if they were meeting me at my apartment, I was paying for their car to get to my apartment. Now, if I was in the States, I would drive to pick them up, right? So, okay, cool. So it's, it's same. Like, I don't, the aspect of the cost to it doesn't really matter. But it's the reality of that. I had a date with someone that I know it financially strained them after I found out how financially strained they were to meet me where they met me to have coffee. And I'm like, I was grateful that they didn't ask me or want me to pay for them to come to have coffee. You know, like I'm buying the coffee. But at the same time, like their financial situation is not my financial situation. I would have rather pay because I didn't want to put them in a financial hurt to spend time with me. But my point in saying all that is with that financial aspect of things, you automatically get put in this, wait, are you with me because you're eating better than you normally do? Or because you get to go to restaurants that you don't typically get to go to? Or because this is an opportunity for you to have a come up? And that's in the back of your mind. And even if you express yourself clearly like this is a concern, they could just play right into it because they can, they do, and they will. Um, so, and like, if you talk to an honest Colombian woman, she will agree with you. Paisas are paisas, and they're not all bad. But the culture is that men get used for money. 
Like, it's just real. And, and I mean, listen, here's the deal. They will have a Colombian boyfriend and then multiple foreign boyfriends. Because the multiple foreign boyfriends, they're only coming in six. They only have six months for the year to be here, right? So if they come in, they're not coming in for six months. Maybe they come in for a week. Maybe they come in for two. And if you have four boyfriends that are foreigners and they come in at two weeks a pop, that's only eight weeks for the year. Which means the rest of the time, the other 40, uh, 44, no, yeah, 44, 52, 42, yeah, other 44, the other 44 weeks, you can spend with your Colombian boyfriend. So, yeah, then listen, they're going to keep sending you money because you're their legitimate girlfriend in their mind that you see for two weeks out of the year. So, you, and, and listen, you're not sending them what you think or consider a ton of money because the money in the U.S. is a lot different. But again, here's that's the opportunity aspect. So, like, I've literally had girls when they realize I lived here. I'm like, yo, I live here. Like, yeah, and I understand that you're going to do this because this is what you do. And that's, you know, like, I accept that that's that. And I'm just trying to learn you. But if, like, we date, you have to understand that, like, I'm not going to be okay with the four foreign boyfriends that you have. And I've literally had girls when they when they realized like, yo, I lived here and the potential for something real was real, that were like, oh no, I don't, I don't want that. Cause they'd rather have the multiple boyfriends. Cause here's the other thing, right? Like you want to talk about having your cake and eat it too? You don't actually have a serious relationship with anybody. There's no stress, right? There's no stress. There's also no love, no respect, no honesty. But there's no stress, right? For these girls, there's no stress. And now they have multiple people that are sending them money on a regular basis. And if one gets pissed off with them, how easily do they play play the silent card and the silent treatment? Because they're just going to talk to the other three until you're like, okay, I'm sorry. And then you start sending cash again. And like this cycle means they almost have an unlimited funding source. Now, they don't know what my financial situation is, but in their limited point of view, which is very limited, obviously, um, this is a better situation for them. I respect it. If that like, don't fuck with me and waste my time. Tell me that. Cool, no problem. But it's the culture. It's literally the culture here. You know the other culture here? Oh man. Oof, I didn't know this. I didn't know I was gonna go off on this tangent. We're 31 minutes into this episode. And I'm like, there's so much more I want to talk about when it comes to sex tourism and sex here in general. Um families will send their their daughters to the park to work. Hey money's tight in the house. We need money. We need food. Can you go please work? And they know what their daughters are going to do and they're okay with it. They're, they're telling them to do that, accepting it. And it doesn't even matter if it's prostituting because it could be webcamming too. And listen, let me just say this right now. I don't judge any of these things. I've dated a webcam model. I have dated prostitutes here. Full disclosure. I have dated Girls, I actually, I, I talk about this in one of my episodes, or maybe I just shared it on my story, but she would, like, we had a really good relationship and I messed it up because I, was, I wanted to play around. Um, it sounds, I know that sounds weird, but it wasn't. She was, a, she was a great girl. She is a great girl. Um, but like, I would rather date a prostitute here than a webcam model. Because if you and the prostitute get serious, she'll stop prostituting. And prostituting is her just having sex with other people which I've had plenty of sex, a lot of sex. So like, I can understand that. Webcamming, that shit is out there for, I will fucking, never, listen, hear me, I will never date another webcam model. I will never be in another serious relationship with another webcam model. I mean, I so mean that. I'm saying this out here to like, put it on record. Because I won't. Because you can never, you can't. Like, it's out there. It's out. It is forever out there. And so, like, I don't judge any webcam models. I don't judge any, like, yo, do what you got to do. Do what you feel you need to do for your life. But for me and my life, in the public space that I'd like to hold in the world, I'd like to change. I don't want any pictures of me and someone taking your face and realizing, oh, my goodness, here's a, here's you having this other man come in your face. True story. I dated a girl. She's a webcam model second of second webcam model um 
She was actually friends with the first webcam model. Don't <laughs> Instagram, you fucked up, man. Listen, we I, I promise I'm gonna make this an hour long episode. <laughs> I dated the first webcam model. She talked about me. Uh, she probably still talks about me. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad publicity. Publicity is still publicity. And so, and however she talked about me and all the things that connected, suggested accounts are real on Instagram. And so I I came up as a suggested account and this girl starts watching my stories. She's watching my stories. I'm sharing my food. I'm cooking. And eventually she's like, oh, you know, your food looks delicious all the time. We're having a normal conversation. She's asking me like, what is this? What is that? And I'm saying what I'm cooking and, you know, how and blah, blah, blah. Eventually I'm like, yo, one day we should go out for dinner. And I meant like go out for dinner. And she's like, if you're going to take me to eat, you're going to cook for me because I...